Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 11, Definition of Congruence and Some Basic Properties. So we're going to start defining congruence. I have been using that term all along, so it's nothing new if you've been watching these videos. Okay, so exercise one says, describe the sequence of basic rigid motion that shows S sub one right here is congruent to S sub two. So an equal sign means equals. This little squiggly line on top means congruent. What congruent means is the angles are equal measures. The arcs are equal measures. The lengths are equal measures, but the item, the shape may be in a different location. So they aren't equal. They are not equal. This thing is upside down. This thing is up here. They're not the same. So we can't say they're equal. So we say they are congruent. A says describe the sequence of basic rigid motions that show S1 congruent to S2. So I want to move this up here to see if S1 is congruent to S2. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace this. Okay. Okay, so I traced S1, it is now red. And just like the last lesson, we are going to do sequence of basic rigid motions. And the first thing I want to do is get a point that corresponds to the other shape over to it. So obviously looking at these two shapes, these really pointy tips here are the congruent uh, angles. So if I draw a line segment from there to there, and put an arrow there. That will be my vector. That I'm going to move this angle. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to set it right on top. And I'm going to merge it with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the vector direction and distance so that my initial points at my terminal and now this point is right where it's supposed to be so that was my first move so then let me ungroup those now that I've used that vector so now I have this shape and it's right here well I need to get this over here so that's going to be a rotation so if I rotate this shape now remember the rotation a true rotation would be around this point but I cannot animate that with this program then it would end up like this okay all right so now we're getting closer kind of looks like a crow with, with a beak okay so now i need to reflect this across so a reflection is going to be um like this but then i need to fix my rotation again and there it is a rotation landing the image right on top of the or the pre-image right on top of the image okay so it says describe the sequence so the first thing we did if this was vector a b then we did a translation a b followed by rotation d degrees clockwise about point A. Now let's call it C. It's like I used A already. About point C. And I'm going to name this C right here. Okay. And then finally a reflection across a line segment and let's call this D and this E over here so we reflected it across segment C and D so we translated it we rotated it and we reflected it okay number two now it's saying how are we gonna get S2 over to S3 okay Okay, so now I want to move S2 over to S3, so I need a vector. Okay, so I drew a vector, the distance these points are away. That's the vector we're going to move it in that direction, that distance. I'm going to copy that so I can 
judge how far to move it. That's going to be my movement. Okay. Actually, I want to do something here before I do that. Um, I'm going to copy this. So there's two of them, so one stays there. Okay, so now I'm going to move that along with this. Okay, so we're going to move this until my initial point ends up at my terminal point right here. And notice those points are right there. Okay? So I'm not going to move that one again. So there's my, my translation about, and let's call that A and this B. So this is a translation of vector A, B. Okay. So now this is here, and then I'm going to take that Okay. It won't let me grab that one I just moved. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate this one and I want to rotate it around until it lands right here. I'm rotating it about that point, so I need to rotate it a little bit more. And now this is right there. So that was actually two moves and we are done, comma. So we translated about AB and then rotated this direction, which is D degrees clockwise. Okay, so there's B. C. Describe a sequence of basic rigid motion showing S1 going over to S3. Okay, so C says to describe a sequence of basic rigid motions that shows S sub 1 is congruent to S sub 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a vector from this point here this point right here to this point down here. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, they're not going to this snaps to zero degrees, so I'm off a little bit here. It's not going to allow me to draw exactly, but it'll be close enough to explain this. So if this was my vector of the direction and the distance, if I put an arrow here, there's my vector. So I'm just going to move this off to the side somewhere here. Okay. And that is the direction of my vector. And if I name that vector, a, B, this is point A, this is B, and this is the direction and the distance we have to move it, then I'm going to move S1 over to S3 first. So if I copy this vector, pair it up with this, and move a move A to B in that direction. Now my point is right there. Now I didn't put my vector in a very good location. So let me fix this. Okay, so now I move my vector over here because it was going off the screen here. So if I move this shape S1 this direction until A becomes B, so my initial point of my vector moved to my terminal point of my vector. And again, like I said, I was off a little bit with my vector simply because it wouldn't let me draw a one degree diagonal slope there. So now that we're here, we've moved this di direction. Now I can see that there is going to be a reflection. And if I drew a line right around here, Okay, so if I show this, if 
we use this as our L line of reflection, then you can see that this will get flipped over here. So if I flip that left right and then move it across to here, now I'm there. But the flip obviously was will have landed right on. So this program will not allow me to reflect across a line. So in essence, it would have happened in two steps. So then it says describe a sequence. So the first thing would be a translation of a b vector going in that direction and then we did a reflection across line l okay exercise two perform a sequence of a translation followed by a rotation of figure x y z where t is a translation along vector AB, and R is a rotation around O of D degrees of your choice. Label the transform figure XYZ, and, and then it says is XYZ, I'm sorry, label your transformation figure X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and is XYZ congruent to X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Okay, so now that we've gotten into the habit of doing this, you see that I have made a copy of XYZ and I made it green. And I made a copy of vector AB. So now we're going to translate. So let me mark this as we go. It says to perform a sequence of a translation followed by a rotation where T is a translation along vector AB. So we're going to move this, we're going to translate this along vector a b which will move it up to here so there is my first mo motion let me get this cleaned up a little bit okay so there is x y z over here that's my first step okay so now i'm going to copy this okay so now what i've done is i've made a copy of it in a lighter green and you'll see that when i move this i'm going to rotate it around center O of my choice. It doesn't say how many degrees, it just says to rotate. So if I rotate this just a few degrees like that and I went clockwise, so that's a negative degree measure. Okay, so there's my rotation. So I moved X, Y, Z over to here. That was my first. So I'm just gonna name these. Uh, if this was my first shape, then I'd call it S. And this was S sub 1, and this is my S sub 2. Now it said after we did the sequence of translation, so I just did this R rotation of D degrees around center O. So rotating around O moved it over here. So now this would be X prime. This is Y prime, and this is Z prime. Okay. So if I get my protractor out and I put it right on X, I'm just going to measure this angle. And I line that up. Then I see that. Now let's make that a little smaller. Okay. So I want to be right on that line X prime, Y prime. So now I'm going to move this to my line X, Z, and that is 50 degrees. So I will label that. So I just measured that. This angle right here is 50 degrees. So then I'm going to move my protractor over to X, the original angle. I'm going to rotate it so it's right on X, Y, and then I look at my measure, and sure enough, it is right on the 50-degree marker. So I am going to label this 50 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to grab my ruler, 
and I will line it up using metric, a little more accurate. Rotate it around, and I'm measuring x, y. So if I put this right on the dot, I'm at 32 millimeters. So x, y is 32 millimeters. And then I want to see if x prime, y prime is the same length. And if you look, sure enough, 32 millimeters. So 32 millimeters. Now, that's the only thing I'm going to measure right now. Obviously, if this angle is going to be congruent to this angle, then the arc YZ prime is going to be the same as YZ. And the measure and the length will be the same. And then finally, XZ would have to be the same length as X prime, Z prime. Okay, so the question is, are they congruent? And the answer is yes, because the angle measures were preserved and the side lengths were preserved as well, as long as, as well as the arc length and measure. Okay, that is the end of lesson 11. Review these, this summary and go do your problem set.